What's How up? you doing, guys? Sa, what dude. episode is this? Saw, dude. Nineteen? Is this nineteen? Nineteen, yeah. I think so. Shit, dog. We almost to twenty. What's up, everybody? Who we got next? Whoa, what's up, dude? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, I got my live chat on still. Um, this week we have Roger Thomas himself doing a virtual biography of him where basically he's going to go over every single thing musically he's ever done in his entire life. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, stick around and you can always call and live chat to get in on the action, steer the conversation in any way you want to go. Is the cat in the box? It's like sniffing it out, dude. <laughs> it's a oh, new, man. it's a new litter box and it's like new, not even litter. It's like pellets. Oh, he didn't do it. <laughs> Yeah, it'll be so, really, it'll be really hard. It'll take a while probably to adjust. Yeah, if you guys don't know, we're gonna do a giveaway if we ever catch the cat using the litter box in Josh's it's background. Box right here. So that's the fucking that's the deal with that. <laughs> um, yeah. So basically, we got a lot of news this week. Um, I've been booking like crazy, trying to get ahead of the curve here, with a lot of help from my buddy uh, Keith, who made us our awesome logos. And a little help from Christian, they've been kind of shoot. They've been kind of steering me in the direction they want our show to go by sending me <laughs> interviews of people that they want in the show. So uh, this week we have Roger Thomas, of course. Um, next week we have uh, that would be December 11th. We have Into the Moat with pretty much everybody who's ever been in the band. Like it's going to be a crazy one. Like a lot of people are into inf Into the Moat. It's been highly influ influential to a lot of people who play this style of music and all around fucking badass um the uh, december 18th we ha we're gonna have michael from car bomb which i just saw them with dillinger and that's basically what that interview is gonna be about is that crazy fucking tour they've just done with dillinger where it's just fucking yeah. insanity so i can't wait to like pick his brain about that yeah. and then we have um the week after that january 8th we have simon from war from a harlot's mouth as well as nightmare which is awesome, Dylan. You should check them out. You should probably like them a lot. Um, then we have an interview the 15th with Tony from Live By Mistake, which is another one of those bands that just started out and blew the fuck up in the scene of what we do, which means that they weren't gigantic, but in this scene, they were a fucking big deal as well. And then I just, did, I just booked today... Um, an interview with John from Success, We'll Write Apocalypse Across the Sky, and also Nightmare. So, um, yeah, if you guys are into that, you know, like our page, then you'll always get notified when it comes up and we have this awesome shit going on. Um, since we started a little bit late today, let's do the uh, how was your week, and then we'll jump right into the interview with <laughs> Roger. So, What is behind you? Know, Where are you at right now, Dylan? Yeah, what's up, Dylan? Me? Yeah, where are you at? I'm in uh, Estes, Colorado. Estes Park. I'm in the Rocky Mountains. Where are you staying right now? I'm in a fucking log cabin. Nice. Up in the mountains. <laughs> yeah. That's what's up, dude. Staying, uh, did, you guys, did you get that on a uh, Groupon? <laughs> we got the, the airplane ticket for, on a Black Friday. Oh, okay. So yeah, that's right. Four of us flew up here for like $300. And then we got the resort. It was Black Friday. Buy two nights, get one free. So. Where do you? Where'd you go on freaking? Here where'd you are. go to get plane tickets for Black Friday? Frontier, dude. Frontier. Black Friday tickets. Yeah, they were like twenty dollars. Like Frontier Communications. Frontier Airlines. Oh, I didn't. I didn't even know that was a fucking airline. We flew out of Lakeland. That's tight. No, sure. uh, that's nice. like that's like the one thing I wouldn't think of to look for on Black Friday. It's freaking airline tickets. Yeah, for sure. Your beard's coming in nice, Dylan. So, yeah, we'll get some pictures of it. It looks very red in this uh, this this ambiance in this room. <laughs> Did you ever try to get a hold of the guys from Redneck? No, we're north. Oh yeah, we're way north. Ashley was getting motion sick. We were in just a sick. Minivan. Oh, so dude, yeah, I had a cruising. I had a fucking brilliant idea, right? <laughs> I say that, Dylan, you got to set your computer down somewhere, man. I'm getting a bunch of ruffle noises. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. But anyway, uh, it's only when you move. And yeah. so, 
I was thinking, how awesome would it be if we had a show where we weren't even on it and we just had our girlfriends run the show? <laughs> that would be that would be great. <laughs> but well, my girlfriend, Beyonce my girlfriend one. would not at Lonnie wife for two. Agree. <laughs> she would not do it. No, nah, dude, she's not got time. She... <laughs> I think that show would be so funny, bro. All right. Well, anyway, how was your week? Like, like right now, she's at work, <laughs> but you know. Yeah. She's like, I don't want to be on fucking internet. I was like, <laughs> uh, my weekend was decent. I worked a lot, which is good. Cause I'm making money. Got overtime. Uh, Thursday is gonna be good payday. Yeah. That, that must feel nice. I I get the same check every week now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, I've been editing these damn these sheep clothing stuff, and every week you brag about how you're on unemployment. <laughs> I don't. I'm not bragging, dude. That fucking like, episode not, last week. You don't brag, but you speak of how you're on unemployment. Last just week's in case episode the was just. Didn't know you just. Them in. Last you get up last week's episode was just hilarious. Like yeah, just <laughs> torn just apart funny. because of your unemployment. Like Spaghetti <laughs> head. Oh Spaghetti head. Those guys are fun. Right. Burning shirts on your head working at AutoZone. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this dude has to work at AutoZone. He has he doesn't have a choice. <laughs> that shit was hilarious though, for real. Um Yeah, this past week I didn't really do much at all. Um I got a new RDA. Yeah. Bad boy. Um, other than that, I've spent. I'm down to like a dollar in my bank account because I've been fucking. I gotta know bank what bank lets stuff. you have a dollar in your bank account because my oh, bank I'm on doesn't. A, I'm on a credit union. Dog. I'm on oh, Suncoast. Right. Suncoast, man, that is the shit. I love that bank. Yeah. But anyway, there just um, needs to be more of I'm them. I'm gonna talk on here because. We're like way behind schedule, and he's been sitting at his computer since nine. I'll be right back too. All right, but did you know that you can only get a Suncoast membership if you work for the schools, or if you live in Ruskin, or if you are family with somebody who's in the credit union? Right. My yeah. mom's been there since like it started. So, but I was accepted because I worked in Ruskin. Really, like being in Ruskin is like a part of it. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, so hopefully Roger figured out his uh, being able to stream from his page as well. What the fuck is going on with this, man? I am so... Stream from his page not... as well? Oh, okay. Well, he'd be able to if he... Mate, mate. Does he... Uh... How is he doing that? Does he do it the same way I do? Because it would be tough. For you. Not good. I don't. Know, I don't have any idea. I told him to do it from his phone, but uh, he just figured it out. I guess I don't know. Maybe he did. Maybe he didn't. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> What's up? Hey, buddy. Yo. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Can you see? Me? Yes. I can't see. This <laughs> Supposed to? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's an option. Wait, we gotta figure. I gotta figure out how this works. Quick. <laughs> There's you. Okay, I see you. I see you. Oh, I see. All right. All right. Well, everything sounds good. Um, play us out, dude. <laughs> this is a part participatory. Experiment right here. I need one of you guys to sing the blues with me real quick. <laughs> well, I was at work. <laughs> Hit my hand with a two by four. <laughs> now I got the workers comp blues. <laughs> Spaghetti head. <laughs> so, Roger, why don't you let everybody know who you are if they haven't seen our past interviews or know who you are? They're just watching for no reason. Um, fill everybody in. I'm just some dude from the neighborhood, you know. Uh, I don't know. I met this guy several years ago. Um, 
And yeah, I, I was in a band called Shed For You. I guess that's where we know each other from. Uh, and that's about it. I play in a lot of bands for the last 15 years in the Tampa Bay, St. Pete area. Um, so now I'm on this on this crazy podcast. Happy to be here. <laughs> How you the fuck is doing? Doing good, doing good, man. Wonderful. Um, I, I do just want to let everybody know before we start, um, we kind of have to take turns talking because if you notice that there's... If there's uh, audio coming from one of our other speakers, our microphones or whatever, then it's going to cut off the other person talking. It's because yeah. it like Skype does it that way. That yeah, must have happened a new update. Yeah, it does that sometimes. I notice that. Like when there's two people talking at once, it fucking like dilutes like the good quality sound. Yeah, for sure. So um, as we get started, uh, I, w- I was kind of thinking of some questions. I wanted to leave this as open-ended as possible because I wanted this to be like... Roger kind of guiding his own biography throughout whatever he's done or whatever, whatever he wanted to talk to you. But like I said before, you can call in, you can comment, and we will throw those up on the screen or we'll ask them or ask the questions you ask or whatever. But uh, before we start with the, all the bands and whatnot that you've been in, I wanted to ask, what were you into before you started playing music? Like, uh, you started younger, so I know it was like around high school time. Like, what was your main hobbies before you got into music, or were you always just super driven to create? Before playing music, I guess I was into, like, uh, eating candy and playing with Legos and shit. <laughs> uh, nope. That's a deep fucking answer. <laughs> I might have had some, like, some Tonka trucks and things like that. I don't know really. I don't really remember that. I mean, that was a long, long time ago. I, I was a little kid. I start, I've been playing music for as long as I kind of remember. So, right on. And um, okay, so what was the first time you ever got together with other people and started creating music? Uh, the first time I got together and started creating music was so I had this band. My very first band was called Dynamite. I think I was maybe like nine years old. And it was me on electric guitar, this girl named Jeannie Cogswell, who lived four houses down from us. She was like seven, six or seven years old. She was on bongos. And then my neighbor, Paul Mazaris, I don't even think he had an instrument. Maybe he did vocals or something. And then Ryan Rutger, across the street, played guitar also. We had one concert at rehearsal that was basically in front of like 10 neighborhood people in my garage. That was my first time getting together with people. <laughs> and... Throughout that, like, what what happened in that moment that basically sparked something to make you want to keep doing it? Uh, I think I was interested before that because I remember I had my Fender Squire, which is the first, guitar, first instrument I ever had. My dad bought that for me. Uh, it was a Wayne's World Edition Fender Stratocaster Squire. It had what? Like, That's fucking dope. Isn't that crazy? Because, like, as I got older people would say that I look like Garth or some shit, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's funny how that kind of came full circle eventually. I don't know. That was weird. But um, So we can thank Wayne's World for everything that's happened with you musically. <laughs> yeah, man. If Wayne's World didn't exist, I wouldn't play music today. <laughs> <laughs> right on. So um, I guess you can sort of steer this any way you want to go now, if you want to start with the list or whatever. I mean, I really don't... Um, I don't really have anything to talk about. I was kind of hoping I'd have some homies just call up and talk shit with me, you know? <laughs> yeah, for sure. But, um... um well, Chris is on that. He wanted to know about your van. Or a van. Who wanted to know about my van? Chris, Den- Chris Denny. <laughs> Ask Roger about his van. What about my van? <laughs> Ask about your van. He's like, I may or may not have a van. I don't know. I have a minivan. Have a minivan. It's a 2001 uh, Toyota Sienna. It's uh, It runs pretty good. It's got about 140,000 miles on it. Um, <laughs> so, so recently you uh, you received an award from Creative Loathing. Or but, Loathing. But there's got to be something interesting about his van. That, you know, that's why they're asking. There's got to uh, be something weird. So basically, I live in St. Pete, and St. Pete um, is known for lots of muralists and having murals on the buildings and things like that. And um, 
two friends. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Bloom. Bloom is like a, a DIY art gallery that all the muralists have a studio inside of this warehouse. And I have my rehearsal space inside this place too. And two of my friends uh, who are also mur who are muralists from the area basically collaborated on my van. So my entire van is, is like a giant mural. That's dope. <laughs> that's yeah, what he's Chris, Chris says it's covered in hippie art. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they got some really cool murals down there though. I'm a hippie. <laughs> all right, Chris. Far from a dream. That's all I gotta say, man. <laughs> uh, okay, so back to the creative loafing. Um, did you receive what uh, award? Did you receive? Uh, it was a Critics' Choice Award, which basically means that people from the offices of Creative Loafing decided this. But um, it was for MVP slash. Uh, best musical force, I think is how they worded it. How did it feel to receive that? Uh, kind of cool. Um, I guess it was it was kind of a cool experience, but the actual ceremony itself was really fucking wild because there was like a thousand people there, and at the end of the ceremony, it was just a free for all because they had all the awards, all the plaques and stuff that they give away on stage. And they had two people from Creative Loafing announcing all the awards just one after the other. Not people, like, coming up individually, just, like, it was crazy. Basically, a stage just flooded with people picking up awards. They gave away, like, 500 awards that night, so. Holy shit. Yeah. So it was it was a crazy experience, but it, it was cool to receive that award, I guess. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Did you, Did you ever? You... What's that? Is that the first one you've ever received by Creative Loafing? That's the first one I've received, yeah. Um, and I've probably done more this past year uh, musically than any other year, so it it makes sense, I guess. It's, I don't know, it's kind of cool. Um, Pat says, Brett convinced Roger that pineapples come from pine trees. He didn't convince me of that. He <laughs> tricked me. He said... We were in Winn-Dixie, which is my first job. I got a job at Winn-Dixie. I made $5.25 an hour, and I worked like 15 hours a week in the soap. <laughs> and we were standing around in Winn-Dixie, and Brett said, hey, Roger, did you know pineapples come from pine trees? And I was like, uh, yeah, and I walked away. <laughs> <laughs> and now, like, now I think that, according to them. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what was, like, the first um group or whatever you were in that actually released something like that you could hold in your hands and put on put it in say a cd player or a tape deck or something uh the first thing i ever did was something called utopia which was like drum and bass music um that i made with this program called soundtrack which i don't know if you guys have ever heard of that but it's kind of like garage band but it predates garage band um and I basically just like stacked drum loops on top of each other and did stuff like that. Um, that was the first thing I ever did. And I made, I burnt CDs and like handed them out. And I did that when I was maybe like 13. Right on. Yeah, 13 or so. <clears throat> so, yeah. If, um, like I said, if anybody has any questions or whatever, feel free to give us a call. I still don't know if I can figure out how to do the Skype thing, but. So were you? So you were a guitarist first, right? And your band? What would you say it was? Explosions or? What did you say the first band was? The first band. Wait, the one that I just mentioned. No, no. The first one. Uh. Oh, that wasn't a real band. That was just my first. It, when he was like, like nine or something. I was like nine. That was the first <laughs> no, time I got. So you started out playing guitar, right? No, I started out playing drums when I was uh, about seven years old. I grew up in church, so that was where a lot of my early musical uh, influence came from. Um, who is still a really dear friend of mine and ended up continuing to play music with me even in the past couple of years with projects. Um, his name is Johnny Mercado. He's a fucking badass gangster, and he actually taught me how to play drums. <laughs> I was like a little little ass kid, um, so drums were my first instrument, and then guitar was came afterwards. What made you um, pick up guitar? Uh, honestly, my dad bought me that that Wayne's World Squire, 
and my dad's like uh my dad's an amazing guitar player um but he plays like blues in the vein of old Eric Clapton and Cream and stuff like that so uh I was never really into that so from a young age I kind of like I started to play a little Nirvana. I can remember learning Smells Like Teen Spirit when I was a little ass kid. And then I kind of put the guitar down. And then I don't really know what caused me to pick it back up, but I started finger picking around maybe 13 or 14 years old. I got I got really into like folk music and started finger picking and stuff. So tell us a little bit about apartments. <laughs> um. The only reason I re even remember this was a thing was because I I found a stack of old CDRs. Half of them were broken, unplayable, and scratched at my parents' house. And there was this thing called Apartments. And then I remembered that uh, Apartments was this thing that I did with my friends, uh, Joanne Saucy and John Savio. And I grew up with both of them in church. And uh, it was also made with that application, uh, that program, sound, what is it called? Uh, soundtrack. And it was just some goofy ass electronic shit, uh, <laughs> you know, God inspired. Like those two were people that I grew up with in church, and it's just a, it was, <laughs> it was fucking weird. I don't know. So, um, George asks, let me hear about your favorite rig setup. Uh, I need more. Elaborate. As far as uh, your, what's probably, your favorite thing to play on, guitar wise? Yeah. Uh, honestly, I just play with it. Like my favorite thing is a classical guitar with no pick. My favorite guitar that I have is uh, it's a Gibson classical from '69, and uh, it's beat to shit. Kind of looks like Willie Nelson's guitar, minus the giant hole in the front. Kind of like the and acoustic I have actually. That shit's beat to shit. It's like '70s maybe. So. Yeah, that's like. <laughs> I, I don't know anything about pedals, really. I know how to use a loop pedal, like, a little bit, but I don't have a loop set up, or I don't have, like, a, an amp or a rig or anything like that. I just play, like, like classical shit. Like, just, uh, you know, strip down. Like <laughs> stuff. So, hey, when you I, were... Uh, oh, go ahead, Nick. Uh, no, you go ahead. It's going to be drawn out. Go ahead. <laughs> when you were in um, L.A. touring with Pleasures... And you walked into that guitar shop. Was that pre-planned when you were playing guitar? And the dude was like, you're amazing. Let me record you. No. So, okay. So when I was in LA, um, our last show was in San Francisco. And then my flight back to Tampa into, uh, into the fucking thing, um, that was like four days after our last show in San Francisco. So I took an 11-hour Greyhound bus from San Francisco back to LA. And I basically had three or four days in LA just to kill. Um, so... My motivation and, you know, what I was trying to do is I just went to all the vintage guitar shops that were in the area. And I saw this place called Norman's Rare Guitars, and it didn't click with me, but I actually knew about that place because I'd seen YouTube videos. Apparently, it's like a super legendary place. And, um, and I had seen videos of it, but I didn't realize that that was the place um, when I initially, like, saw that that was a place in the area. And then uh, I got directions to the place. I went there. And I just walked in and I was like, damn, this place is legit because they just have thousands of vintage guitars on the walls. It's it's crazy. Um, and I just started picking up instruments and sitting down on the couch and playing them. And Norman was right there. There was like no one else in the store, really. And uh, he just kind of started. Uh, he struck up a conversation with me. He told me a really cool story about meeting Lenny Bro <laughs> and uh, Ted Green. I don't know if you guys are, are you guys familiar with like. Ted Green and Lenny Bro, like old jazz guitar players and things? No, no. I'm not. <laughs> well, real funny story. It's not really relevant because you guys don't really know the references, but it's cool anyway in case anyone else uh, knows about it. But Ted Green is an old school jazz le guitar legend. And Norman, the guy who owns the guitar shop, was a good friend of Ted Green's. And he said that he met Lenny Bro, who was another legend, but much lesser known. His life deteriorated into like drug use and things like that. But he met Lenny Bro through Ted Green, and um, it was at his shop, and the very first thing that Lenny Bro asked Norman, who owns the guitar shop, was, got any acid? <laughs> was, Hello, I'm, I'm Norman, you know, to Ted Green, and he's like, nice to meet you, Lenny, and Lenny's like, got any acid? That was <laughs> it was just cool to hear that story. 
but um, no, the whole thing's uh, pre arranged, if that's what you mean, or anything like that. I just kind of sat down and he grabbed the camera and was like, You mind if I take a video of you? <laughs> so, um, Pat asks, Ask him about his band AIDS and DDMK. <laughs> AIDS and what? DDMK. I ha- I don't even remember what the fuck DDMK is. Um, but AIDS was a band that I had pre-shed for you with uh, Brett Wimberly and our mutual friend Brandon Alipore. And basically AIDS was an acronym that stood for Americans in Dysfunctional Society. Um, so it was really lame. And uh, we just wrote really stupid songs. <laughs> really stupid songs about nothing. I hope that's not the story for every band I ask you about. <laughs> it was really lame, and it was stupid. No, 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 no. I didn't even put AIDS on. You saw that list I gave you, right? AIDS was not even on there. For real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, like I promised, man, anything that goes into the comments, I'm going to ask. It just keeps things a little bit more spicy. Um, Feel free. Anything. So, uh, next on the list is Utopia, in brackets. <laughs> oh, no, that was the electronic album Okay. that I, that I spoke about. Um, you want me just kind of, like, to go down the list briefly? Yeah. All right, most of the stuff isn't really worth talking about. It's just kind of stuff I did when I was between the ages of 10 and 15 years old, you know, and I was just getting into writing music and stuff. But I had a project called um, Orchards which I did two albums with. It was kind of like post-rock, down-tempo, electronic music um, when I was maybe 14, 15 years old. Then I had a band that I had with Chris Denny from Shed For You that was called Far From A Dream. Um, and I played drums in that band, and it was kind of like... I don't know. Chris Denny basically was in love with Fish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to start there. He loved Fish. He was really into Dream Theater. Uh, who else did he like? I'm sure you know he's going to you know what's funny is right now you actually have the platform and Chris really can't retaliate to anything you say besides the comment. So feel free to get your revenge. I, I know it's fun, right? <laughs> now, who else did he like? <laughs> you know, he was into like, uh, who's that guy who did Stranglehold? Ted Nugent. He was in the Ted Nugent. Hey, Ted Nugent's the shit. <laughs> the shit. I actually have a picture of my grandmother and Ted Nugent because she was best friends with his mother. <laughs> True story. Um, anyways, so there is that band. Uh, between 2001 and 2005 or six, I had like a, uh, a solo keyboard grind project that was inspired by like Locust and an Albatross. You guys familiar? Remember those bands? Yeah. It was kind of like that. Um, and then I made all of that music on an old Yamaha keyboard that took floppy disks. And my roommate at the time that I was writing another album had a had a bad drug habit, and he sold like half of my instruments, including that keyboard. So I actually pressed a 12 inch with that project um, shortly before he stole my keyboard. So when he stole my keyboard, the project came to an end. So I'm sitting on like 150 vinyl from this project that I had when I was like 16. <laughs> well. You know that we like to collect vinyl, so if you want to get some off your hands, I'll I need, take some of that give I need to give them out. And I went to Chicago and played some shows and, and uh, just played open mics and stuff uh, last winter. And I went to this record shop called Sugar Records in Chicago, and I told the guy the story. And he told me that stuff like that was really uh, highly sought after, just like stuff that no one knew about, you know, especially in the heavier kind of musical things uh and he basically offered to buy most of what i had off of me right on which is cool uh, but i never really took him up on it because i'm <laughs> late but <laughs> but i should okay so what comes after uh orchards uh orchards far from a dream orphan was the one that i just spoke about um i basically i had like a full-headed elephant mask and i would shove a microphone through the mouth of it and then play keyboard over pre-recorded everything else on that keyboard. So that was... <laughs> um, and then after that came Shed For You, I guess. 
Okay. Well, we spent uh, pretty much an entire hour talking about Shed for You in the past. So if you want to see that content, go to our YouTube and check out the Shed for You interview. Um, so, I mean, I don't want to basically just glaze over Shed for You because Shed for You is amazing. And um, what would you say were similarities to Shed for You if you had to put it into a category? Like, not really what type of band was shed for you, but, like, what inspired you guys to play that style of music? You know, it's funny. Um, last night, last night, yeah. So I was actually at Brett Wimberly's house last night for a barbecue, and everybody was there. Brett was there, obviously. Uh, Chris was there. Pat was there. Um, we talked about this last night. And we don't ever get together. So this is just a coincidence that that happened last night and today we're having this podcast. But um, basically, I was really into Deftones when I was in middle school. Okay? Deftones are horrible. I was really into Deftones when I was in middle school. And I remember this. I remember going to a specific show at this church in the woods to see Under Oath during uh, Cries from the Past. When they were when they were on that shit, and Brett basically converted me into the Deftones thing into like liking hardcore music. And the album that he transitioned me to was Opposite of December by Poison the Well. Do you remember that shit? Yes. Okay, so that was my transitional album from like Deftones into you know regular kind of like hardcore stuff. Um, and then from there, it quickly went to, like, real shit, like, good shit. Like, uh, the stuff that inspired us to play that was Early As the Sunsets, uh, Discordance Axis, things like that, it immediately went to. Um, and that's kind of what, you know, inspired that. Right on. Um, so what comes after Shed for you? Uh, we had this little death metal thing that Chris Denny was in for a minute called Tow Truck. And basically, do you guys do you guys know Tim Kelsch? No. He you comments know? on our stuff. Yeah, he follow, he watches the the cast. Oh well, then I probably know of him definitely. Yeah, yeah. We've. Do you guys know Peter Pepper? <laughs> the, <laughs> Peter Piper. Peter Did he pick a peck of pickle pickled peppers one time? That's the one. Oh yeah, I know him. He's a nice dude. Okay, cool. With <laughs> brother Tim. Name three of his albums. <laughs> We did this. We did this death metal project <laughs> called Tow Truck, and it was, it was my my best friend Brett Johnston. I don't know if you guys are familiar with him. Do you guys remember Violetta? Just assume that every person you're asking us about, we don't know. You're in the What's you uh, you you're, you started this podcast to interview metal bands and shit from the area. So do you remember Violetta? They were a no. local metal band. Okay, so no, Brett Johnston. Keep them on fires. Brett Johnson was a guitar player of that band. He was in tow, this tow truck thing. And then we went to go play a show at the old Masquerade side room in Tampa. Yeah. And uh, Brett didn't show up. So we called Chris and was like, hey, can you fill in for Brett? Chris goes, I don't know how to play any of the songs. And we were like, it doesn't matter. They're not real songs. <laughs> like, you, you know, just play whatever. Just fake it. And uh, so, yeah, that was basically a death metal project. We released one album. And I'm pretty sure we recorded it in one night. Um, Those are Chris always the best. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of things happen like that. One of the Shed For You releases was a tour edition album um, that was recorded in one day as well. Written and recorded in one day. <laughs> Sick. I was in a band that actually released two albums that were both recorded in one day. <laughs> it was excellent. It's a, it's a fun experiment. I like doing such shit like that. And we have fans in Guatemala. <laughs> That's what's up. Man. <laughs> that happened. Uh, so George wants to know um, why did you like the Deftones? <laughs> I think he honestly just wants to keep us on the Deftones topic because he knows I fucking hate them, and I've always told him personally that I hate them because they're like one of his favorite bands. You know, man, when I was in middle school, I had I put gel in my hair and. <laughs> And formed my hair into little spikes and, like, dyed the tips of them green and, like, had pimples all over my face and wore Deftones hoodies and, like, listened to all that bullshit. You know, I was into that. 
I still appreciate Deftones actually to this day. I could still fuck with White Pony a little bit. You no. know? <laughs> God, <laughs> God fuck no. I'll probably buy it though. It's just part of my past, you know? Yeah. Def- Deftones is just like one of my pet peeves, man. I fucking. It's like ICP. If anybody starts talking about the Deftones or ICP, I immediately shut off and don't care about what they're talking about. <laughs> You know. cannot put Deftones and ICP <laughs> in the same category, man. They're exactly the same thing. Like, everyone who listens to Deftones likes ICP, vice versa. That's bullshit, man. I, 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 I think it's to that, man. I'm down with the clown, man. He's like, this interview is over. I'm definitely not down with the clown. <laughs> but I think that, like, it wasn't something that's like... I'm just doing that for you, Nick, because I know you like him so much, you know? Man, this entire interview is just going to turn into fucking Deftones worship. I know it. <laughs> All right, let's move on from Deftones then. <laughs> um, actually, you know, it didn't really sound too bad when you were playing guitar. Do you want to do an Ophelia song? Oh, my gosh. I just think it would be nice and embarrassing. <laughs> Well, you're right about half of that. Um, <laughs> you know, it's funny. Um, Ophelia, just to, if we're on the subject, is like probably the most personal project I've ever had. Uh, it's just... It's very vulnerable. I'll say that. It's extremely vulnerable. And from the t- and I'm it's, it's almost foreign to me right now because I haven't really fucked with... The, I played maybe two Ophelia shows in the last 12 months. Um, but I started it when I was like 17, 18 years old, you know what I mean? So like from like my early twenties is a very like crazy time of my life. And I was very open about all of my experience, like expressed through that music lyrically and just everything. And I don't know, I just haven't really, I haven't really played Ophelia shows in a while, but I'm currently working on a new album again for that. And I'm pretty excited about it because I feel like Ophelia is kind of my heart, like where my heart is honestly at. And I've been away from it for so long. It's like, I've been missing something. I've been missing a part of my life. That's like important by not playing it. We should turn all of your Ophelia songs into grind songs. (laughs) (laughs) I would be, I would be about that project for sure. Sure. But I'm not gonna, but I'm not going to sing like you, Roger. (laughs) You should try, man. You, You could do it. No, I've I actually had a acoustic project for a little while called Ladybird, but that was just I know where you're coming from when you're saying like when I say like Ophelia is something that's like vulnerable because when you're like first of all like being in a band and being on stage and playing like metal is fun and you don't have to worry about like shit like stage fright or anything else because you're up there with your fucking homies and you're having a good time. But when you're standing by yourself without a band and playing like an acoustic guitar and everyone has to hear like you sing and they can hear every single thing, like if your voice cracks or something like that's there in that. And then when you're playing acoustic music, unless you're in like Tenacious D or something, then you're pretty much singing about like girls or heartbreak or something that's personal to you because it's like pretty sounding music, you know, drug abuse or family yeah. problems or fucking anything, you know. And it's funny Ophelia that Ophelia you know, was a band, though, right? Who was? Ophelia was a band. You actually added more members into it, a violinist, and yeah. Well, I did Ophelia for like, uh, you know, I I still consider it an active project, uh, but I started it in 2003, so it's like 13 years old now, and it's always been. And I've recorded a lot of albums with it, um, and I've had two different incarnations of ba- of full bands with it. The first one was my friend Matt Jara on drums and Ryan Berman on cello and myself on guitar and vocals. Um, and then the second incarnation was the dude that taught, that brought me into music from the beginning of my life, Johnny Mercado, who I referenced before, on drums. He came later in my life and played drums for me for that band. And, uh, Matt Malchick on bass, later went to Tony Maz on bass. And... Uh, Brad Myers on dulcimer, banjo, mandolin, violin. So, like, yeah, lots of people. It was a full band at two different times. Yeah. Um, with me for uh, 
when I was doing the Ladybird stuff. Like, it would basically just be like, I would get drunk. And I originally wrote this one song called Florida's Like Quicksand. And I would get drunk and I would play this fucking song when I was drunk because I didn't care because I was drunk that I was singing it in front of my friends and shit. And then, like, uh, my buddy Josh, who recently passed away a year ago yesterday, he, um, he was like fucking in love with these songs. And like, every time we would get drunk, he would like make me play guitar and make me play this fucking song. And then, um, it went to the point where we actually, I never wanted to play live anything like that or at all. Like I was so ashamed of this fucking project. Like I, it was just shameful to me to play something like that. Cause I've always done like metal, you know what I mean? And my buddy, Ricky Reed, who calls the show often, he, um, he was doing a lot of ac acoustic music at the time, and Josh actually did some acoustic music with him. And I, Dylan, I think you did some South County Bandit shit too, didn't you? Yeah, very little. Yeah, but um, so, like, he basically set up this surprise kind of show thing for me, and um, it was at the Black Coffee Gallery, and him and our buddy Dakota wanted to play a show with me because they wanted me to do more with this Ladybird shit. So like. They told me, like, after I went to the show, they told me that I was going to end up playing the show. And I was just like, ah, oh, fuck. So I just, like, went out to the parking lot and got hammered, fucking wasted, super drunk. Like, I filled up a fucking uh, Polar Pop cup with just fucking, like, straight whiskey. And I was just fucking, I got sloshed and then went inside and played, like, five or six horrible fucking songs. And it was just so nerve-wracking, even, like, completely wasted. And even though that, like, everybody in the room was all, like, my friends, basically... It was just fucking terrifying. So, I mean, being in a project like that is super fucking personal. And it's just, you're basically just putting yourself out there and like slitting your wrists for everyone. You know what I mean? And it's definitely difficult. And I remember the first time uh, Dylan and I were like super in a shed. And Dylan's like, have you seen the project that Roger does other than Shed for You? And I was just like, no, I had no idea. This was fucking years and years ago. And he pulled up a video on his uh, phone or something. And he just, I literally was like beside myself because it was just so hilarious to me to see you actually doing something like that. You know what I mean? Like I always thought of you as, like we said, oh, Roger's this crazy dude that's on acid. Don't ever talk to him. <laughs> and like, then I see this and I'm just like, oh, Roger's kind of like a person. It's, <laughs> it's comical. Yeah. Okay. So before I even comment on anything that you just said let me just nip this whole thing in the butt because it came up last time that we had the shed for you podcast yeah. i was not on acid all the time it yeah was, but i mean apparently there was just like this cloud of like you know just these rumors about me and stuff and i'm not saying i was never on acid but i guess that when i was taking acid no one else was <laughs> so yeah. maybe like it was like blown up to be this thing like over I, I wasn't crazy on acid, but I, I definitely uh, had a relationship with it. You know, in my early twenties, I, I definitely liked it. Well, but I mean, it was it was the the fact that all we knew about you was the fact that somebody told us you're always on acid, and then you're sitting there with no fucking pants on playing a show. Like that's all we knew about you. I'm playing grindcore, I'm like sweating profusely. <laughs> I mean, I'm playing blast beats the whole time for 25 minutes straight. Like, there's a reason that I had my pants off. I didn't just walk <laughs> out. I'm not like in the grocery store with no pants on. You know, I'm drumming in a hot ass venue playing gravity. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. But like, what you were saying about doing that type of music and just being naked and exposed and vulnerable is super fucking true. And it's funny because when it comes to performing that type of music, uh juxtaposed to the other all the other genres playing in bands you know uh and not having to worry about stage fright and all those things it's crazy man that to to go up there by yourself and do such vulnerable type of music i kind of liken it to stand-up comedy in a way i listen to a lot of stand-up comedy podca podcasts and that's how i feel about singer songwriter you know just stripped down performance musically because you know, in in stand-up comedy, you bomb all the time. Like, if you're not having a good set and you're not meshing with the audience, you just bomb, apparently. And that's that's my personal experience with playing Ophelia, is yeah. I 
bomb all the time with Ophelia because I'm just so vulnerable. And, you know, there's like super amazing highs with playing Ophelia live if it's like a magical moment and the audience is good or if I'm if I don't give a fuck that night and I just do my thing. You know, it's it's a it's like the most amazing thing. In a way, playing Ophelia shows are the most exciting shows that I've ever played because they take a lot of courage. And I feel like a pussy because I haven't played Ophelia shows in a long time because I've been working on other things. But, you know, truth be told, like, that is my heart. Like, that's that's who I am. Is really? that so I don't know. But yeah. yeah, you're totally right. So um what did you I don't know if we skipped anything between Shed for You and Ophelia, but back to the list. <laughs> um honestly a lot of the early shit that I talked about it wasn't even worth mentioning. It was just like the stuff that, you know, when I was a little kid or whatever. But two projects that were pretty funny that I should mention are one was internet drama. Internet drama was during Friendster. So do you remember Friendster? Friendster was pre-MySpace social media. No, I just remember Exanga and LiveJournal. <laughs> okay, so it was it was on par with LiveJournal. Yeah. Uh, but basically, internet drama was my friend Josiah Ronco uh, on vocals and myself on that same keyboard that I mentioned that I used for the other projects that took a floppy disk. And you know how you have a keyboard and you could just play chords and then choose the style of music that you want to play and it plays all the accompaniment behind it? You just kind of choose the tempo. So that's how we made that music. Um, <laughs> play the chord progression and it'd be like a Calypso thing that was really quick. <laughs> and we would talk about bullshit like social media uh, stuff. We had a song called You're So Off My Buddy List. <laughs> Referencing AOL and some messenger. I don't know. It was a goofy ass project. Um, another project that I had that I actually thought was really cool and still think it was kind of cool looking back on it was Chris Denny on drums and that dude Josiah Ronco on bass. And it was called Knox Over Street, which references the character in Dead Poet Society with Robin Williams. Um, and that was like American football inspired, uh, like. I want to say emo, only because back in that time, that was a, a relevant genre to reference your music st musical style at. Yeah. People understood what the fuck that meant, so that's why I'm calling it that. But it was like, you know, clean, clean like, open tuning stuff. That was that was a cool project. We did one album and played a couple shows. Um, and yeah, that kind of covers, like, the early, the early projects, I guess. Right on. Um, so do you want to skip ahead to something that you're interested in talking about or just keep going down the list? Uh, we could do whatever, man. It's up to you. Is there anything you guys want to talk about? Well, I wanted to ask, um, like which of these, uh, bands that you've been on actually did like anything touring wise? Was it only shed for you and, um, pleasures or? Yeah, um, that's it. That was yeah. the only touring experience that I've had, really, is... And Shed for You is early on, you know. It was, like, uh, junior, senior year of high school, and maybe, like, a year beyond that. And then Pleasures, just recently, yeah. this past year. Um, you know, it's funny. I was, I was thinking about this earlier today, and, you know, I've done so... In preparation for this podcast, I was actually doing an inventory of all these bands and projects that I've done, but only, almost none of them have have done any touring, and have actually got out there to, you know, the public at large. So I realized that most of these projects that I've done are kind of just like music that I've done for myself. Yeah. <laughs> It's weird. It's like I have all of these things and, and people know about it, you know, and there's like albums and stuff that have circulated, little things that have been done. But for the most part, 
no one <laughs> really knows about most of it. And it's kind of like a personal, I don't know. It's like, I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. Well, um, you know, like maybe one day if you actually do get like big at what you're doing and stuff, like that is shit that's, like you said, is going to be sought after. You know what I mean? So I would definitely try to get all that on the internet at least. So it's just so it's like chronicleized there. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. Um, that's I put the Shed for You discography on the internet. Yeah, and, definitely. And Chris, Chris knew about it before I even told anybody. <laughs> I'm just like, how the hell did you even find out about it? Like, are you sitting at home typing in like Shed for You on the internet? Like, <laughs> <laughs> he does a once a biweekly Google on Shed for You. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, just... um, Chris, if you're listening, call in, man. <laughs> man i want to talk to you so did you guys have anything you wanted to ask how do you um how do you like pleasures i love it man um are you familiar with the band have you heard any of the stuff they've done i saw them at um curtis hicks and park with bata scat and that was my son's first concert and they uh down there and talked to um i think his name mike and greg Mike's the old drummer, and they gave us some stickers and some CDs and shit. So they were really cool guys. No, I love. I when we first started this, I wanted to get them on here. We should do a podcast with with the whole band sometime. It's it's a super dope project. Um, it's being in the band has really uh, like lit a fire under my ass to do to just put my shit like in motion on a in a serious way because. In the past two years, Pleasures has been around the country ten times. Yeah. And that's not, that's not something that I'm used to. Um, and I just got back from tour with them recently. And it's a beautiful project, man. And they do all types of crazy, like, merch-type shit. They put out a, um, a workout VHS. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> pretty cool. And uh, this past tour, it was like Halloween kind of sat right in the middle of that tour. So uh, we built a screen and brought a projector on tour and the keyboardist uh greg ferris made a horror movie a silent black and white horror movie and we would play the horror movie before our set and then we played the soundtrack to the set live to the movie um so they just do like super cool shit like that it's it's yeah, been a really that's cool awesome. being in the band that's fucking cool shit <clears throat> chris denny says why <laughs> why do you want him to call in I just want to hear his voice, man. I, you know, I love Chris. He's a rock in my life. I can, lean <laughs> on I need, I need some support, you know. I definitely say it's interesting banter every time you guys are together. So, <laughs> and I just love that cocksucker, you know. What can I say? But yeah, man. So, yeah. is there? What are some ideas for? Because I know that, like, you probably have a million of them, but. What are some projects that like you'd like either joked around about creating or actually wanted to create and never got to create or just like some ideas you had and stuff like that? Projects that I wanted to create. Uh, I've been wanting to do a grindcore project with Chris again for many years. Yeah. I, I, s- <laughs> I wish that would happen because I would love to do vocals for that like more than anything in the world. <laughs> Yo, hit your boy Chris. So let's do. Let's get it going. I'm, I'm pretty sure that he just finds me like extremely annoying because I just fangirl on him every time I see him. <laughs> he doesn't really think that. That's a front that he puts up. <laughs> yeah, he's he's really a fucking marshmallow. You know what I mean? He's like, you cook him on the fire and he's charred and fucking calloused on the outside, but then he's warm, gooey center. He's a big softy. But um. Yeah, uh, you know, I don't know if this is premature to say. I really don't think it is because last night kind of like solidified this. But I think the Shed for You reunion is extremely likely to happen. Fuck yes. Uh, cool. <laughs> I really do. We we talked about it last night, and you know, we're actually like putting plans in motion to to do it. Yeah, cool. well, definitely let us know because we'll promote the shit out of that. Actually, yeah. I'll probably try to find a way to record it live and just play it over our stream. That would be rad. I'm super stoked about it, man. I can't even tell you. Like, just talking about all this, you know, that so much has happened since Shed Free was a thing. 
<laughs> Dylan just got. Dylan says he has goosebumps. <laughs> oh, I mean, no, seriously. Like, since shed for you was a thing, so much has happened. But like, this the whole podcast and just because before the podcast happened, um, you know, we didn't even get together. I don't even think I saw Chris for like a two or three year period. And just the whole thing kind of brought us back together and and it brought back all these memories. I don't know about you guys, but my memory is fucking sh- completely shot. I fucked my brain up in my first yeah. early 20s. And uh, I'm like, I'm missing a lot of those memories. And apparently Chris has like a super amazing memory because he brought up a lot of old, you know, memory lane shit uh, as of recent. And it's just like wow, you know, that shit was really fun. It was it was important, and, like, we would have such a blast doing it again. Yeah, and, it, I mean, it's it, like like we said in the previous podcast, like, it's weird to know how much that something you thought was menial and just fun to do with your friends actually, like, affected other people's lives, you know what I mean? Like, musically, and, like, Shed For You was such a big deal for all of us, like, when we were growing up. Like, we guys put you on a fucking pedestal. Like, it was amazing to have one of the, in my opinion in this genre of music, like one of the best bands in that category would be so close to our hometown and be able to be blessed and see you guys all the time. Like it was outstanding. And it's, it actually like hurts my heart sometimes to be like talking to people about bands like that aren't from around here that don't know about shed for you. And I've always just kind of like pushed it on them and been like, you guys have to check this out. Like it's insane. You know? Yeah. You know, what's really, Really funny is the the, uh, the bands. The... Good, good. Oh no, sorry. I just have to walk away because I live in an apartment and my next door neighbor was banging on the wall as we were talking. So. <laughs> <laughs> so is this the, the dude? The, we should uh, make a segment funny thing is... of cribs. <laughs> we oh yeah, do a, want... a crib segment. You want to do that? Because um, last week on. When we interviewed the great redneck Hope, he was walking through his house too, and he was doing like a crib thing. All right, yo, what's up? It's your boy Roger from. <laughs> Take you to my apartment right quick. This is my this is my Fender Rhodes that I was playing on. Nice. And uh, got a little studio set up. I don't really know what I'm looking at. It's a little synthesizer up there. This is my controller. I'm gonna take you through my studio. This is my little studio here. And then uh, still in my studio. I don't know if you can see this. This is a tambora. Let me see if I can play this right quick with you. Neighbors hey, will love it. There you go. Anyways. Your neighbors, your, your neighbors probably think you're the weirdest person alive, man. <laughs> nah, they're cool. They're not, they probably do. You're probably right about that, but. <laughs> this Fuck. motherfucker in here jamming on the Tim Bora all the time. <laughs> yeah, this is my little, uh, this is my little cla- little classical section. Got a cello, violin. My friend Naomi Gluck, local artist, painted this sexy ass picture of this female up in here. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you can see it. Uh, this is my cat. You ready? Got Privy right here. Can you see her? What's up, Privy? That's my girl. Uh, let's see, what else? I got some vinyl, vinyl collection. Yo, man, this is the Cribs episode you asked for. This is my cat's condo. <laughs> got a condo in your apartment, homie. That's fucking baller. You see that? Yeah. And then, uh, you know, more instruments on the walls, an organ. Well, shit, man. At least if you ever went broke, you'd have plenty of shit to sell. <laughs> That's true. I definitely have some assets. Uh, this is a Hieronymus Bosch painting in my in my kitchen. You know, I don't know. It's a cool ass apart. A little, little. You gotta, apart. Sh- you gotta show us where the magic happens, man. It's like the best part of cribs. Oh, that's that's what I'm about to show you right now. <laughs> so basically, this is where the magic happens, right here. All right. Oh wait. Well, it's not very bright, but that's that's a uh, you're like that's, that's the point. <laughs> that's the thing. Yeah, that's the point, and that's the thing. Hey, let me show you this. I think you guys might appreciate this right here. 
This is a picture I normally have hanging on my wall. Here, wait, let me move it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Can you see it? Yeah. All right, good. Yeah, so that's... That's the thumbnail for YouTube. <laughs> that was painted by a buddy of mine in the area, John uh, Taramina. And yeah, I'm going to reposition this back on the table so we can continue talking. <laughs> that's my house. I got to go. <laughs> and I'll see you next time. <laughs> that's funny as fuck. I really think we should make that a segment. <laughs> Sheep's clothing cribs. Yes. <laughs> Looks like Dylan froze up on us. Did he? Oh, yeah, he did freeze up. I like, <laughs> I like that look, though. I like the way he looks in that freeze. Back. <laughs> Dylan always freezes in a good position. Wait a minute. Who's Charles Spears? <laughs> That's Dylan. Oh, okay. Is that like your dad's name or something? No. <laughs> Hey, hey, what was what I was gonna say earlier is um all these bands that we're interviewing, they're the ones that are telling us the stories about Shed for You when they played in Tampa. Like Tower of Rome, we were interviewing them, and they mentioned the show that you, we all played together about Bug doing the front flip into the uh, front windshield of Megan's car, <laughs> and then uh, going back to Roger's apartment and making an entire grind album on a keyboard. Wait, wait. Oh, you talked about that with Tower of Rome. You're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah. You know, to be honest with you, I don't even remember having Tower of in my house. <laughs> there was another, I think there was another episode we did where they, we talked about Shed for You as well, but I don't remember offhand which one it was. But uh, it was, I think somebody said that they had played with you guys or something. Hmm. That you guys were cool dudes. Yeah, but Tower of Rome, they actually, like, splurged about you a little bit. They're like, that drummer, that drummer was fucking amazing. <laughs> like, they were going on about it, so. They were talking about me? Yeah. Oh, wow, they're too kind, man. I don't even remember, like, what my drumming was like back in the day. <laughs> Other than, like, the recordings and stuff. Like, I don't yeah. know. It's been so long since I played grind. I'm really excited for this reunion if it happens, man. I really hope it does. Yeah, it seems like the only person who's not stoked about it is Chris. No, 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 no. He is the most stoked about it now. <laughs> I promise you, he is. He's giddy. That's what's up. And it's a pleasure to see, man. I'm happy about it. Um, but okay, yeah. so I did want to uh, – the guys don't know about this yet, but I talked to Roger about it yesterday. Um, so I have been talking to Chris Arp from Psyopus, and he's writing us an intro to our show. And Roger has agreed to play drums on the intro. Yeah. <laughs> what's up hell yeah dude i was like i want it because really chris, cool. yeah chris sent me a couple um clips or whatever and he had like drum machine and stuff on the background and he was just going to send me a clip for from his project that he was going to do with phil on samo but um i was like you know i'd really like to make it more personal and kind of collaborate with some of the people who have been on the show and stuff so i was like have well of course have chris hart do the guitar part because he's fucking legendary and then have Roger do the drums for it because Roger is the most musically talented person I've ever met in my life. And then I was, I was thinking about uh, messaging Derek from, from a second story window and having him do backup guitar on it. What? That'd be cool. He, he'd like that. Yeah, he would. He'd really just soak about it. And, and then, then get ex most of disgorgeance to do the vocals. Nah, I'm going to do the vocals. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm, secret, I'm secretly just putting together a <laughs> dream team band. <laughs> so when it's super sick, everybody's like, hey, we should just start a project. <laughs> Yo, dude, I'm, I'm sorry I haven't really been super present about that other thing that you had talked to me about, that other project with that yeah. dude. From, um, uh, no, that's, that's, that's cool, man. Because um, it turns out, like, the same time you were on tour, he ended up being on tour about it, too. So we'll just throw it on the back burner figure that shit out later honestly i just want to play with musicians that i'm super stoked about playing with and create something you know what i mean definitely definitely but i just i did just order a new microphone that should be here uh monday and i can 
I'm able to actually put vocal tracks on shit now. So it would be a lot easier to do a, a band that no one has to put any work into over Skype. <laughs> nice. Yeah, man, I'm stoked on life right now. Lots going on. Um, Pleasures is actually recording this week for a 7-inch release. And we're currently booking a five-week tour in sp spring of 2017. So I couldn't even imagine what I would have to pay Chris Art to fucking give me a 30-second clip of music. <laughs> like, I don't know if that's like how much would that would cost him to do it, but I'm pretty stoked that he's doing that for free. I think he should be paying you, man, <laughs> for the opportunity to play for the podcast intro. I'm, I'm just super hyped on the idea. I think it's going to be badass. I think it will be. That's a good idea. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> so let's kind of try to jump back on topic here. Sure. Let's, well, actually, we asked, um, Josh asked his question to shed for you as a whole, but Josh, do you want to ask your questions? Uh, he's got some... <laughs> I don't know. Well, I mean, the long, confusing one is kind of already asked that one. Uh, I don't know if I asked you if a hot dog is a sandwich, though. Me? Yes. Is a hot dog a sandwich? I mean, oh, it's, shit. It's a, it's a type of sandwich. <laughs> the type of sandwich, so it is a sandwich. Yeah. Okay. Dylan, did you check them comments? What? Look at those comments, bro. Where? On the fucking live stream. Read them. I've been trying to look. I just, all I see is Deftones. Read them. <laughs> fucking dude, you got to read that shit. <sighs> Why? Deftones. Because fucking Daniel from The Hope just sent Dylan a question that said, yo, ask DMAC if he's coming fly fishing or bitching out. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> Come on. Hey, I'm up here in the Rocky Mountains, man. Estes Park. I'm at the resort. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about really? you, man, but I'd be jumping on that fucking opportunity to go fly fishing. I got so motion sick just driving up here from Denver. <laughs> I cannot handle these mountains. Uh, okay, so you say yes, a hot dog is a sandwich. That's just, that's just my opinion, but... Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I somewhat agree because, like I was saying, it is underneath the sandwich or burger section on a menu. I mean, they're not going to give a hot dog its own section, but that's my feelings on the thing. It depends on the type of restaurant you're dealing with. Like, if it's a hot dog predominantly serving restaurant... And they have their own section on the menu for hot dogs, Chicago <laughs> dogs, New York style dogs, you know, whatever the fuck. And then different sections for other things. But yeah, I think a hot dog is a sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Daniel's just blasting Dylan right now in the comments. It's pretty great. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> he said you have lady parts like a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Old spaghetti head. Yo, so Nick, I don't know, I don't know if you know this, but I host a uh, folk music like artist showcase here at in St. Pete, um, two Fridays a month, and I would love for you to come and do. What'd you say it was called, Lady Bird? Oh, uh, you're smoking crack, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> not, any I'm, not anymore. No. <laughs> I'm definitely not doing anything. You should like totally that. do it. I think that you should come and do Lady Bird, man, at, at a Florida Folk Scene Showcase. It's $75 pay, and it's only 35 minutes of original music. You could throw one or two covers in there if you, if you need you know, to make up for lack of original material in the time. And um, let me look at my calendar. We're going to book you one right now. Is that cool? I will drive to St. Pete. I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. I don't know about well, that. Like, I'm <laughs> nervous. <laughs> you get so no, nervous no, right no, now. No, no, no. We have three artist slots per showcase, and I'll play one of them myself. And I haven't played an Ophelia show in a long, long time. Man, so I'll, Roger, I'll get up on stage and be vulnerable if you get up there and be vulnerable. You know what I mean? Roger said he's only going to record the drums if you play Lady Bird. I don't drink anymore, man, so I don't think Lady Bird's possible. <laughs> Yo, man, it's good for you to get up on stage and do that shit again. It'll turn you into a new man, I promise. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Well, it is on... Um, 
it is on SoundCloud somewhere. I haven't listened to it in fucking forever, but I know that it is on SoundCloud. I want to see it live. Nah. <laughs> That's never, ever going to happen. Um, I, the only way that would happen is if I lose whatever contest contest it is with Dylan and Josh. Because we're doing, we're gonna do a contest where we're gonna try to get Josh to do a uh, like a guttural vocal tutorial on YouTube if he, if he loses. <laughs> so there's mine, I guess. That'll be the only way that that happens. I don't know, man. I think you should do it. Seventy-five bucks for the money, if for nothing else. You know what I mean? The only way. I- I would do it if literally no one saw it. <laughs> like, none of my friends showed up. <laughs> if we kept it a secret, maybe I would do it. Just don't tell anybody. We won't promote the event, and you'll just get the normal built-in clientele that goes to Green Bench, which is, like, people that don't give a fuck about it. You know, about it. the brewery, place. man. Yeah. <laughs> he said, how much can you... Daniel says, how much can you bench because you're carrying this interview? I don't know to who he's describing, but... Yeah, who's carrying the interview? I don't know. D-Mac oh. has lady parts. <laughs> and he said, hey, spaghetti head. <laughs> I'm not allowed to talk unless I'm spoken to. Unless Nick says, you guys got anything. That's what I'm about. <laughs> you guys act like I'm some kind of slave driver. That's not No, I've been, edit- I've been editing these podcasts, man. And I'm so tired of editing myself out just going... Bleh. Is it it? Is it that, uh... <laughs> <laughs> so I just don't say anything. Oh you man, whatever. The, you edit the podcast afterwards? We're putting them on Spotify. Oh, okay. So you have you edit them for the Spotify thing? So we're getting rid of all the, the shit talking and right. then just doing just the intro and the musician interview. Ah, uh, I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah so, so it's going to be like... Um, if you want, like, the whole two-hour show, inter- uh, like, the vlog and all of our personal shit before and after, that's going to be available on YouTube. But the shit that's going to go on uh, Spotify is just going to be, like Dylan said, just intro, then uh, artist interview, and then outro. So it definitely drastically cuts it down in time, I'm sure. This month, oh, yeah. just yeah. moved in next door. They're hammering on the wall. I'm sorry, go ahead. Like, for you to be quiet or, like, hanging a picture? <laughs> no, no, no. I thought that it was for me to be quiet before, but now I'm realizing that they're, like, hanging pictures because they are they just moved in. <laughs> so, fuck it. I'm going back to the roads. Hey, hey, Daniel, why don't you call in and talk Dylan into going fly fishing with you? <laughs> We're going uh, hiking tomorrow. My mom just got on. <laughs> so, Roger, since uh, the questions seem to have slowed down, I guess I'll start talking now. Um, okay. <clears throat> since you've been around the music scene for a while, what's one band locally that you would bring back that you thoroughly enjoyed? Out of anybody, any genre. That I would bring back? Yeah. Or still around. How about that? Favorite local project? Not that I'm involved with, just anybody. Just anybody. Yeah, yeah. Um, totally bear fight. Bear fight? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Damn, that's a hard ass question to answer, man. I don't know. What was bear fight like? <clears throat> I, I don't even remember a yeah, sad anything from. Good for you. <laughs> Yeah, I don't remember anything from that at all. I don't remember one of our song names. I know I didn't have any lyrics. Um, <laughs> oh, that was your band? Yeah. <laughs> nice. So do you want to do some uh, do an exclusive show for us real quick with something? Yeah, sure. I'll play a little thing. So here, this is my... Beloved uh, Mark II 88 Fender Rhodes. I'll play something on this guy. Thank you. 
Nice. <laughs> Very awesome. Thanks, I like man. how I like how was... Dylan set up the sweet fireplace. <laughs> oh, I don't. <laughs> that was that was dope though. Like, yeah, back, your background's on point, man. It's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> they told me I couldn't have it because I keep putting my hand over the the speaker. <laughs> We just, in real, realistically, I just don't want you to have a sweeter background than me. <laughs> no, my, my mom says nice fire, Dylan. Thank you. Yeah, very nice. Is that a real fire or is that an electric fire? I can't tell. It's propane. Oh, so it's real. Nice. And then, and then what's this cat in the middle? <laughs> That's me. That's... My camera's, like, not wanting to work right now. What's up with the cat picture, though? That's my cat. Oh, okay, okay. So that's your that's your actual Skype picture. Yeah, that's my. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, how long have we even been on? Uh, hour t- or two. I don't know. Like an hour, and a half. hour and a half. Uh, okay. You never answered my question, though. Me? About about the band, Resurrection, or favorite band, local band. Uh, favorite local band. Man, my memory is so shot. I'm just, I remember a lot of bands and I certainly remember a lot of ones that I like, but I'm just like. Just a couple that stand out. <laughs> I mean, this wasn't really a local, local band, but uh, Mercury Program was a band from Gainesville. I don't know if you were familiar with them. Mm-mm. What kind of music were they? They were like a instrumental, like post rock band with a vibraphone player. Fender Rhodes player, um, bass, drums, guitar. Super, super good. Uh, Do you want to uh, dig through your record collection a little bit? Yo, that's a sweet segment idea. I like that a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, sure, man. <laughs> so, for the purposes of remembering old local bands or just because? No, just because uh, I've pulled most of my record collection out. Dylan's been challenged, but he's still too scared to show his records off. Listen, listen. Since uh, Homeboy last week called me out on my record collection, I've revamped everything. You'd be proud of me. <laughs> I, I you revamped? Like you hung up different records or you... Yes, I had to. He called me out, man. <laughs> That's funny. He's like, is that your wife's <clears throat> record collection? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I have an emoji. My record collection isn't the best, but I haven't I haven't been adding to it in the longest time. But I should uh I should get on that. I should pull them out. Okay. Eventually. Go ahead. Eventually. I'm like laying down to make this uh, <laughs> doable. But anyways, obviously I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dig through like most of my archived records, but these are just records that I've gotten in the past few weeks, and most of them I haven't even listened to yet. But I'm pretty hyped on them. Um, this is a band called Goat. And they're from Sweden, I think. Have you heard of them? They're like a psychedelic band. No, I've not. They're on Sub Pop. Uh, you can't go wrong with this. Bill Withers live at Carnegie Hall. <laughs> yeah, you can't fuck with that, man. And then I got um, gospel records. This is called Go Devil Go. And this one is uh, My Lord, What a Morning. <laughs> Yo, now, man. Hold on. You you use those for samples, right? Uh, yeah, for sample material yeah. potentially. That would that's like the most ideal situation just to listen to. Really, I mean, I I fuck with some old gospel. It's some good <laughs> shit, you know. Oh yeah. Um, I don't, I don't know. It's good stuff. Uh, you know, it's this is this is a cool record right here. I don't know if Jasmine's watching right now, but uh, Jasmine is a local musician. She's in quite a few bands around here, and this is a record that she just pressed. So this is like St. Pete artist Jasmine. She goes by Soapbox Soliloquy. Yeah. That's her thing. Um, got some jazz records. This is a Foxy Babe right here, Low Leaf. I can't remember <laughs> who she plays for, but um, she's super good. She's kind of like um, modern Bjork with a harp. <laughs> no joke, yeah. Dude, but, you're... The shit you listen to is just out there, dude. It's Yo, out I'm, there. The t- I'm all over the board, man. Uh, do you remember Everything But The Girl? That no, band? do not. You I told that- you, man. If you're going to make reference, we don't know any of them. Do you remember that song that was like, 
And I miss you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Da, da, da. That's that. <laughs> Dude, That's, you should cover that song. You think so? Yeah, definitely. I, yeah, agreed. You think or I you should, should? Or you should cover Bjork songs with a harp because that sounds awesome. <laughs> Are you familiar Are you, with Bjork? Only, the only reason I know. Bird. The only reason I know who Bjork is is because of CKY when they're like, I think it was CKY 2K. When they're outside Bjork's house and they're like screaming at her. Oh, I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> oh. I was In playing all reality. Some in all reality, I think the coolest project that you could do is if you and Josh link up and play some fucking classical shit together. Josh who? Josh. Josh. Pussy. Josh. Pussy Josh. So I have, a, I have quite a small collection of string instruments. So yeah. Josh is yeah. Professional He's being modest. Like... Cello. <laughs> no. He's a legit cello player. Dude, I have string instruments. I have a cello, uh, acoustic classical guitar, acoustic bass, and I think that's it. And a ukulele, actually. But I Josh. cannot take you seriously because I'm looking at a cat. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't know what's up with my webcam, but yeah. But uh, Josh, it's funny because nobody else on the live stream can see Josh's cat. It's just us and Skype. <laughs> yeah. So every week his cam- if his camera goes out, everybody's just like calling him a pussy or a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows what we're talking about. But yeah, Josh is being completely modest. He's like an amazing cello player. Like he's super fucking good. Yep. Really? Yep. Yeah, I played, uh, fuck. Let's see, like sixth grade, since sixth grade, so and however long that is. Wow, so, like, you know, I've actually been talking to a cello player from around here. Her name is Grace Giuliano. Have you heard of her? No. <laughs> Why do you ask if we've heard of everyone? Because never he know. plays cello, man. You're like, hey, I'd well, you never know, dude. There's like not a lot of cellists in this like area, you know. Is that what so. they're called, cellists? Cellist. Yeah. <laughs> My so. mom says that I can play the trombone. <laughs> <laughs> can you? I I was I played trombone in band for uh, shit all through ele- middle school, and then when I got to high school, it was not cool to play brass instruments. So I didn't do that anymore. But no, I, to answer the question, no, I cannot play trombone. My mom just paid a lot of money for a trombone that I ended up breaking. <laughs> you broke your trombone? Yeah, I didn't want to play in band anymore. So I, she doesn't even know this. This is the first time she's going to hear it. I actually <laughs> broke it <laughs> on purpose because I didn't want to play in band anymore. Ladybird trombone edition. <laughs> That's hella rude, yo. That's fucked. It was because... I didn't want to have to wear those uniforms that high school band plays in. Right. So, yeah, that's the story of the, my shortly lived trombone experience. You didn't want to wear the uniforms, but you get your face tattooed. Yeah. <laughs> I actually, I was first chair trombone when I played in middle school. I actually caught on to it pretty well. And then they moved me to baritone because they said, <laughs> my mom says, what the fuck? <laughs> 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 But yeah, uh, I actually moved to first chair for baritone as well, and I played a marching baritone that the school lent me for a little while. Dude, you got first chair? Yeah. You're throwing your life away. <laughs> <laughs> Make a comeback. <laughs> Make a comeback. Um, yeah, so long story short, I don't know why the fuck we're paying for a Skype number. This is like the first <laughs> week in a row I had a caller, and I'm re- really sick of them fucking up my bank account. So we might do away with the call-in section. Yeah, just uh, add us on Skype. <laughs> how, much, how much does it cost? To have uh, it's like six fucking dollars a month, but realistically, they take like twenty dollars out of your bank account randomly, and then charge you six dollars, and then put the rest of it back in at weird times. It's never the same time, and it fucks up my shit if I'm really broke because <laughs> it's like. <laughs> 
<laughs> it'll just take money whenever they fucking want, and I don't. And you never, you can't schedule it because you never know when they're fucking taking it. Yeah. That's a lot to take. It's kind of like that PayPal thing. Like, remember back? I don't know if it's like it anymore, but back in the day when you'd sign up for a PayPal account, they would take like an, uh, a random amount of money out of your bank account to confirm that it's your bank account type of thing. Yeah. So that's what Skype does, basically. Yes. Mm. Um, all I know is they've they've taken up to thirty dollars out of my account one time, and I have no idea why. That seems like way more money than they need to take to confirm that it's your bank. Yeah, I was like, this doesn't even. Anyway, this isn't what we're supposed to be interviewing about. <laughs> yeah, we more just, editing. Usually they just, just do a dollar. Like solid now. Yeah. So I don't know. I say that we wrap this up while we got some good content, and before we start blathering on. Sure. Um, the only thing that I can think of that we didn't really cover is like uh, current projects. If I could just kind of plug them. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Go ahead. Um, since, since I want to hear about the beats, about man. Say it again? I want to hear about the beats, what you've been doing. I mean, you um, just got some recognition on the little the beat that you made, right? What was it? I, can, I can't. I've listened to it a few times. There's a music video or a beat that you made for somebody, something. Are you talking about a, a song called That's What's Up? Yeah. Yeah, so That's What's Up is um, <laughs> is basically the, the first track off of an EP that I'm working on that I just released. And that's kind of what I'm doing now. Um, it's basically all of the musical influence that I have to date um, going into this one project. And it's kind of like Ophelia in the same way except it's it's based in electronic music production so rather than recording a bunch of acoustic instruments like a guitar part and then cello over that and vocals over that and then bells over that it's uh it's based in samples so whether the samples come from vinyl or from my own playing um it's just a different way of recording uh it's you know, uh, the drums are largely programmed, but most of the drum sounds are sampled, are my own drums that are sampled. It's kind of hard to explain. I don't really know how to explain it. But um, yeah, that song is is my new project, which is called, it's just called Roger Thomas by my own name. Um, but I'm pretty stoked on that because I've been listening to a lot of electronic music uh, as of late. Uh, there's a lot of good music coming out. I listen to more m- new music now than I ever did. I just yeah. listen, that's all I do is listen to new music on a daily basis, and it's really inspiring. Um, it's got me making music a lot. So, so, so I'm sure the guys from Pleasures help you out a lot too with uh, the creativity because they're extremely electronic. Yeah, well, they they definitely fuck around with synthesizers a lot and stuff like that. Like I showed you this. Um, I don't know if you can really see it. This is my studio, and basically what I use is I don't really have a decent light source. Anyways, I have. Uh, can you see this? Where's my yeah, hand? somewhat. This thing. Yeah. This is my sampler. Um, so I use a sampler. Was that uh, an MPC twenty four? It's not. It's a. Uh, it's an MPC Renaissance. It's an Akai product. Yeah. And then just a MIDI keyboard and a turntable and a laptop. Um, but anyways, what were we talking about? Current projects. Uh, yeah, you're telling us current projects. Yeah, so that's basically what I've been doing a lot is trying to put, write an EP that's going to be coming out pretty soon. And Pleasures, obviously. I uh, just got back on tour. have another tour planned early next year. And then um, I've been doing a lot of special guest spots, playing drums for other artists. I've been playing behind a lot of, like, hip-hop artists. Um, There's a local group called DN Saint who just did this competition up in New York for Afropunk to play at Afropunk. Um, I went up there, traveled up there to play with them with that. And then there's a super dope um, female MC from Tampa who goes by Queen of X. And I've played several shows with her in the past and she's a super homie of mine um if you haven't heard her you should definitely check her out you just play yeah, I've, I've heard all these guys because of uh i used to go to see uh bang ring shows and samurai shotgun shows and yeah yeah queen of x is my girl dude she's she's so fucking good man um super, super homie super homie yeah 
Um, oh yeah, and there's there's one other band that um, I kind of wanted to touch on, which was a band that I was in uh, from Oc- basically October November of 2015 of last year till about June of this year. It was called Orgasm. It was spelled R G S M, and it was kind of like. Uh, have you guys heard of a band called Hiatus Coyote? I have not. <laughs> it's like a neo soul jazz fusion type of band, um, and I did that for a while. And unfortunately, we're kind of on hiatus. No, no reference to the previous band name uh, ourselves. But uh, for anyone that saw us live, like uh, I just wanted to put it out there that that was something super special. One of the more novel things I've done in the past twelve months. Um, so that was pretty dope. Yeah, right on. But yeah. So is there anywhere that um, people can find current plug projects now, like uh, maybe Pleasures and whatever else you were doing right now? Sure. So the Pleasures website is pleasuresis.cool <laughs> is the website. Um, my solo electronic stuff that I've been focusing on can be found at soundcloud.com slash Music. And, uh, yeah, I guess so those are the two main things. My Ophelia, I have my whole Ophelia discography online for free. That's uh, opheliamusic.net. Uh, Shed For You, the whole discography I put on Bandcamp in the last however long ago, six months ago or so, all that's for free. You can find that at shedforyou.ninja is the website. Um, and, yeah, that's about it. Right on, man. Well... Like always, it's fucking awesome having you on, and you're more than welcome to come back anytime that you'd like, because we just like talking with you. Yeah, um, thanks for inviting me. Yeah, thanks for everything that you've been doing and everything that you're we're planning on doing together. Um, and yeah, I mean, uh, let me know next time that uh, your folk thing is going on, and I'll definitely come try to check it out. You want to do in a, uh, what's the band called again? Ladybird, it's Hank Lady Hill's Bird. dog. You want to do it again? <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> well, why did why do you want me to tell you about the folk music thing? Because I'd like to come check it out. Like I, I live in St. Pete. It's not far drive, and my girlfriend's into that kind of music, so it'd be cool to come see it. All right, cool. I'll holler at you about it, man. And definitely, the opportunity is always open in case you want to play a live show again, man. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll seriously consider it, but I doubt it. <laughs> And let us know the details. Keep us updated with the uh, the Shed for You reunion. Oh, absolutely. Can I close you out with a little song? Please. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, play us out. Well, actually, uh, I do want to call my mom before we <laughs> we go <laughs> off live. Call your but, mom. Yeah. You can. <laughs> do you want to? Yeah, Roger, just stay on for that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, mom, if you heard that, turn off your shit, and I'm calling you right now. Oh, look at these chairs. These chairs. Uh, no, you're frozen, Dylan. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot I had that Bluetooth speaker hooked up. <laughs> Roger, when's the next show? Uh, next shows are... Um, the 16th of this month is going to be, I'm playing a, a solo set of my own and then, uh, Pleasures is playing a set too at Green Bench. Uh, so you should definitely go to that, Nick, if you're living in St. Pete. Please leave your message for eight one. Yeah, totally about it. That's going to be a free show. Um, 
Ross. And then there's a bunch of shit happening in January. Sorry. Are you blowing your mom's phone up? Uh, she. I'm calling her house phone. Uh, oh I think her her. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're killing it. <laughs> hey. He's like trying to tell you some shit. Sorry. Right <laughs> hey, mom, you're on the show. Uh, can yeah. you can you guys hear her all right? Do what? Um, go ahead and tell us what's been going on with Walking Dead. It fucking sucks. Yeah. That Negan guy, he's a fucking asshole. Yeah. He's pissing, he's pissing me off. I'm getting so around and watch it, watch it. He, tonight, Carl tried to shoot him, and um, he caught him. Spoiler alert. And uh, he made him take his eye patch off, made him sing, you are my sunshine in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then he took him back to his house. And he got his little sister, and he goes, somebody walked by the front porch. They were out on the front porch, and he goes, come back later, neighbor. Maybe we'll have a cookout or something. Have you seen it with this guy? I haven't seen any of it. That's why I was trying to get you to clue us in on this season. What happened He's at the beginning of the season? Sicko. This, this nutcake. Nutcake. Okay. Um, <laughs> captured Rick and his group. Okay. All right, so then he takes, he's made um, Rick become, and he's got, what's his name, Daryl? He's got him locked up in, in one of his bins at this place, and he said, told Rick if he didn't uh, do all the stuff that he wanted, getting food and shit like this, that he was going to cut off body parts and send it up Daryl back to him. Okay. So Rick is like, got real passive and everything and now he's just a wimp. But this guy's got a baseball bat and he's got it wrapped with bob wire. Bob wire. And he killed <laughs> he killed a Chinese dude. Glenn <laughs> he bashed his head in on the first series or the very first show because there's only been four. Okay. And he bashed his head in and he killed my guy with the red hair. I can't remember what he is, but he was the, I liked him. The guy with the red hair and the uh, mustache. Yeah. Abraham. That's his head in. So, yeah. And Carol's getting ready to do this guy named Jesus. She went to his group. Yeah. He's uh, black and he has uh, dreadlocks down to his freaking kneecap. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's... <clears throat> So, have you watched anything I used to else? I look forward to it every Sunday. You know that. Now it's like I can't stand to watch it because I don't like this guy. But that's the whole point of the thing. They want you to hate this guy. Yeah. So, have you seen anything else interesting? Um, well, yeah, I haven't been watching much TV. I'm depressed. Why? You spend all your money Christmas shopping? Yeah, well, I spend all my money Christmas shopping. But I'll tell you what. I bought everything online, and that is so fucking great. You don't got to go anywhere or nothing. <laughs> yeah. They're just going to start throwing gifts over my fucking fence as well. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Seriously. I got like 10 gifts that's coming tomorrow on Amazon. Yeah. And then, uh, all the way up to the 8th, I, and then they should all be here. So do you uh, do you hear where Dylan's at right now? Tell her, Dylan. Rocky Mountains. Hey, he's, he's in the Rocky Mountains right now. Is he really? Yeah. Why don't you come get me and take me? <laughs> he got plane tickets for like twenty dollars. Is that why you got a fireplace going? Yeah. Because I, I said, man, it's only fucking ninety degrees out here. What you got a fire going for? <laughs> How lucky are you, bud? Yeah. How's my kids? They were pissed off today. He said they're both pissed off today. So, did everybody go to the Rocky Mountains? Or is it just you and your family? Just um, the immediate. Ashley, Denver, Connor. Did your mom go? I can't hear you guys very well. 
Yeah, it's because you're not on the show. You're on my phone. It's weird yelling Denver's name in the hospital or the <laughs> um, in the airport because we were in Denver and my son's name is Denver. So it was pretty funny. They're like, why do they keep calling this kid Denver? All right, Mom. So we're going to let you go. Uh-huh. All right. I love you. I'll talk to you later. Nice to meet you, Mom. I can't believe you didn't hey. even chew me out about the trombone. Are you going to help me make alcohol? No. I'm going to come over and eat pumpkin roll. I'm not going to come over and make it. What? I said, I'm going to come over and eat pumpkin roll. I'm not going to come over and make it. So are you guys coming over here early, early in, on Christmas morning? <laughs> yeah, we are. But this isn't a personal conversation. We're on a podcast right now. Oh, I didn't know you were on the thing. Yeah. Oh. Wait, you think I'm just group calling you with Dylan? <laughs> yeah, you guys are like doing that three-way calling. All right. <laughs> you on. You remember when I used to call you on Sprint Relay? <laughs> You remember I would call from Sprint Relay and they would have to say whatever I typed? Yes, and you used to cuss and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought that was funny. All right, but I love you. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> or something. Hey, you need to get rid of that, uh, whatever that Skype or whatever that thing is that they're taking money out of your account like that. Yeah, I know. All right, I love you. I'll talk to you later. All right, I love you guys too. I love you too, Bye. Bye. She always says she loves Dylan. All right. Sorry about that, guys. I thought that'd be way more interesting because I thought she'd be pissed off. But anyway. That's all right. You want me to close you out with a song real quick and then we can all go to bed? Yeah, sounds good, man. All right, here we go. stylings of roger thomas thanks everybody really excited about how the show turned out this week we'll see you next week um with into the moat so look that forward to that one. yeah the entire band it's gonna be sick so tune in next week uh we need to come up with like a closeout thing like see you, you next the, week you can play the intro and then you have to make an outro <laughs> <laughs>